right, this is the first video on image compression. So what I'm gonna do in this exam in this video is just sort of talk a little bit about image storage, the way we'll look at it, talk about how um, how the SVD can be applied to this, and then do an example with a really, really simple image that we can just almost draw by hand, even though I'll have some nice pictures of it. So first thing is about uh, storing an image. So there are a variety of ways that this can be done. And so what we're going to do to keep things simple um, is we're gonna stick with grayscale images, so no colors. And all the grayscales that we use will be, so basically what we'll do is we'll, we'll take an image and we'll break it up into pixels and we'll store each pixel as a value between zero and one, where one is white. So think of it as being one is on when the light is on in the pixel and zero is off. So an image, So it will be stored as a matrix representing pixels. So each pixel or each, um, let's say element of the matrix, which represents a pixel. So we're let's say representing a pixel. will have a value between zero and one. So zero is black, think off in terms of the light for the pixel, and one is white, think on for the pixel. So for example, a really simple picture like nine by, or three by three, suppose you had a grid like this, and all you could do is fill in those. So maybe you wanted to indicate the letter X. Not the best image, that's okay. We'll do a better one in a minute. This will be represented by the matrix. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. Oops, sorry, one, zero, one. Zero, one, zero. So in that sense, we can play around with the matrix and see what's going on. So the question then comes up is what does it mean to compress the image? We call this number two. So what we want to do is we want to find a way of simplifying it in a way that decreases storage. So this is a simplified to decrease storage requirements. And we'll get to the whole point about why this decreases storage requirements later. It'll happen probably in this video, but I don't wanna worry about it immediately. What I wanna do is sort of play around with the SVD a little bit and uh, specifically with the matrix A and see what that gives us, right? So let's say this is three applying the SVD to A. Right? So think about what happens when we do this. So it's worth taking a trip back to realize what does the SVD do again, right? So the way to think about the SVD is to think about the following, right? What it does is it looks at the matrix and it tries to find the most important building blocks. And when we use that phrase, we mean columns, right? So the SVD finds, um, finds the most important building blocks. meaning columns. So for example, if you had a matrix like this, so let's, let's step away from the image for a second. If your matrix looked like this. So if you think about the columns, the columns are both basically multiples of the same thing, right? So the columns, are both multiples of the same vector, or we'll say specifically the same unit vector. That unit vector is one over root two, one over root two. So both of the columns in A, in other words, can be written as a multiple of that. 
which means if you found the SVD, that would be your U1. Right? So if we did, let's say with the SVD, we'd have U1 would be that vector. You could actually do this and you would see that it's true. Because what it's saying is like, this is all you need to build that matrix really in an abstract sense, right? Whereas if you had something like, let's suppose you had 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 1, 0 0.9, and say 0 0.1, 0 0.15. Now here you want both, all of these entries in this case, all of the columns, right? The columns are all multiples approximately multiples of one over root two, one over root two. Or you could say the columns are all multiples of maybe approximately one over root two, one over root two. So here we have U1 would be approximately that. It could be plus or minus just for the record. And then U2 in this case would be approximately, well, would be perpendicular to U1. And this would pick up the rest of the variance. Let's say we'll account for the remaining variance. In the previous example up here, here u2 in fact would be zero, the zero vector, because there's no variance needed. There's no like sort of second direct, or rather, sorry, not zero, zero. It would be perpendicular, but the second sigma, right? because u1 takes care of everything, the second s, I guess we're calling it s2 now, would be zero here. Right? s1 would be everything, right? There's no variation in any second direction. u2 would be a perpendicular vector, but it wouldn't really matter. Wouldn't mean anything, right? So let me clear the screen and then I wanna pull in an image, look at a specific image and see what happens when we apply the SVD to it and look at the practical result. let's say for uh, a specific image. So take a look at this image. So this image can be stored as a matrix. This is two by four. This is the matrix 0 0.9. It's these, so these are sort of 0 0.9. Think of 0 0.9 as a really light gray because it's almost white. So we've got those first two columns. Then we've got some darker stuff. 0 0.5 is the darkest because that's heading towards black. And then 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So if we take the SVD for this, This is what we find, the relevant information. So we get the U matrix, or rather, let's be really, really, yeah, I'll give, we'll give the whole U here. Might as well. So these are the first two values, first two uh, entries. Let me copy that correctly. Bear with me, I'm sort of copying off, off the screen. a seven right there and uh seven two 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 and then the sigmas the singular values there are two of them there's two point three six two eight and zero point one three two zero so most of the variance here we can see is in that first direction In fact, if you do the calculation, this actually contains 99.69% of the variance. So in fact, U1 accounts for 99.69% of the variance. So suppose we, we sort of delete the other singular value. So if we delete um, the 0 0.1320 and recalculate. 
So in other words, we do, let's say a prime and we do u, we leave u alone. We take this new sigma. Now sigma, remember is two by four. So what we're doing here is we are deleting this entry right here. So this is what we get. So it's worth writing this out just to a couple of digits. So notice that these first two, the first columns are the same in each case. Now they're not the same as the first two columns in A, of course. But it is worth taking a moment to notice that these are approximately the same. Which is the whole point, right? We're sort of accounted for most of the variance, right? So if we draw this image, this image is as follows. So notice how similar these are, right? Like these two pictures, let me connect these. All right, they're about the same. Notice that we've lost a little bit of the fact that in the original image, the like the top and the bottom of the first three columns are, let me mark that up, like here, these are the same. That's a bad color to see. Let me use a different color. Um, here in the first image, these are identical. These are identical. These are identical. This is darker and this is lighter. Over here, they're, they're not so identical, not so identical, not so identical. Still darker, still lighter. So it's still picked up sort of most of the variation, right? This is close. Now, so what's noticeably different about it though, cal calculation wise, is in this new matrix, and this will sort of get to the point of where the image compression comes in. If we take a trip back to, or if we look at um, this A prime that we've listed right here, right, the thing to notice here is that because we only want preserve one singular value, right? In A prime, let me say in A prime, all columns are a multiple of U1. In other words, what we've said is that this U1 over on the left right here, that is the only building block we need. For this thing right here. Whereas for the original one back up here, this needed two building blocks. But the images are approximately the same, right? Like at a glance, you might think that the second one and the first one are more or less the same, right? For all intents and purposes, you might not care about the difference. So then we have this question. We're like, well, what? Okay, so we've approximated the image and we've got this notion that this new image is, uh, you know, is, is somewhat simpler, at least in the sense of like requiring only one building block, only U2, or sorry, only U1 and not U2. But how does this affect, um, like compression, like why, why does this save us data? So let me pause, clear the screen, and then I'll make the point for this particular image. We don't need the pictures of the image anymore. As long as you remember that it's the basic structure, right? That it's it's two by four and we simplified and everything is a multiple of U1. That's enough. So let me pause, clear the screen and do that. All right, so I'm gonna leave the images on the side for us to reference. But uh, so here's the data storage aspect. And again, we're simplifying this grossly, right? In the sense of like proper data storage requirements or techniques that there's a lot of nuance and detail. All we really want to do is sort of get to the core of why something is saved, right? So what we'll do is we'll keep really, really simple. And we'll suppose the following is to store a value, um, some real number, 
take space. So, you know, we're not going to worry about whether something's an integer or a real number, etc. right? It's just a number is stored, right? So let's not differentiate between reals and integers, etc. All right, we're just storing values. So we over here on the right, we have our A, that's the image for A, and we have A prime. Now think about to store A. Right. So storing A, there are eight values. So we store all of them, right? Takes eight values. It's a little uh, redundant, but that's okay. Right. Now think about storing B or A prime rather. It's a little bit different, right? So you might still think like, well, there are eight values. And we go, yeah, yeah, but let's store it a different way. So remember that A prime is built out of a single U1. Right? Every column is a multiple of that. Which means this first column, this is some C1 times U1. This is some C2 times U2. This is some C3 times U3. To some c4 times u4 which means we need to store the following right, we need to store u1 right, that takes two values because it's a vector in r2 and we have to store c1 c2 c3 c4 that's four values because the way we're thinking about it is that the algorithm that puts the picture back together will know that it needs to take C1 times U1, C2 times U1, C3 times U1, and so on. So the total here is six values. All right, so what we've effectively done by doing this is we've reduced it. All right, we've reduced the data storage So that's a really simple example. Um, what I'll do in the next video is I'll sort of generalize this a bit more. I want to do this with a little more complicated image. I want to start looking at coming back to this concept of how many singular values we need to preserve to preserve a certain amount of variance and what that looks like when it comes to images. It's a little hard with a simple image like this, but gets this gets the nuts and the bolts down. And then we can start to make generalizations about like, how much storage are we sp are we saving? Things like that. So let me stop there. That's the end of that video.